3D printers are capable of a lot of things. They can create objects that are both functional and fanciful in full three-dimensional glory. But what if I told you that this was made on a 3D printer too? It may look like a flat painting, but this was in fact 3D printed. The layering of the design is what conveys the attributes of lightness and darkness, highlights and shadows. Increasingly often, I've been seeing images like this pop up in 3D printing community groups. Too much fanfare. So I had to dig in and see what it was all about. Now you might be thinking, what's so special? Why use a 3D printer to produce a 2D image? Well, as a point of comparison, here's the same image printed on a laser paper printer. I hope you'll agree that one of these looks much cooler than the other. It's more durable too. So how can you achieve this effect with your own printer? By using Qforge. Qforge is a new software tool that enables the conversion of an ordinary image into a 3D model. The technique is called filament painting. It takes advantage of the translucent nature of most 3D printing filaments and exploits that in a clever way. By stacking a discrete number of layers, we can modulate each color in its shade and intensity. You might be wondering, how is this different than a lithophane? Haven't those been around for a while? Lithophanes are 3D printed photographs with different density regions that allow varying amounts of light transmission. They can be monochrome or full color if printed with special CMYK filaments. The primary difference between a lithophane and a forge fane, I just made that up by the way, is that the former is designed to be backlit, while the latter is designed to be frontlit. Lithophanes typically require a dedicated light source to reveal the image, while forge fanes are visible straight off the printer. Qforge was developed by this guy. He saw a gap in the marketplace and set to work coding up a solution. Qforge is available for purchase through his website. The cheapest package starts at just $12 and gives you unlimited access for personal use. If you'd like to sell your printed forge fanes, you'll need to upgrade to the commercial license at $30 per year or the professional commercial license at $80 per year, which allows you to sell both the printed models and the digital files. The lifetime commercial license, which has the same benefits, comes in at $175 and gets you two years of upgrades and bug fixes. The one caveat is that for commercial licenses, you'll have to display your Qforge vendor certificate at the point of sale. What's quite astonishing is that at the time of filming, in addition to the software license, you'll also receive a Polymaker filament coupon equivalent to your purchase price, essentially making the software free. Note that this offer is only valid in the US and Canada. Qforge is currently only compatible with Windows 10 and 11. Mac support is a work in progress, and any licenses purchased now will also include access to that when available. So it's a pretty great deal on a very cool piece of software. Now, let's dive into it and see how it works. If you've already worked with Qforge, this will look familiar to you. But stay tuned to the end when I show you how I reduce the print time on this model by over an hour, while also increasing the quality of the end result. We'll first need a candidate image with which we can experiment. Any image will work, but one with crisp lines and high contrast will yield a better result. This would be a great opportunity to use one of the many AI image generation tools. Not only do these tools turn your wildest dreams into reality, the images they generate are also royalty free, meaning you can sell them without concern. So I popped over to Discord and queried the Midjourney bot with the prompt Cat in spacesuit, vector art. After a few minutes, I was presented with four options. I chose option four because I like the composition, and coincidentally, it has an uncanny resemblance to my own cat. We'll drag the image into Hueforge, and immediately we'll see a grayscale version. If we zoom in, you can see that this is actually a 3D model, which is being rendered in real time. The interface may look a little daunting, but the mechanics of the operation are fairly straightforward once you get the hang of it. On the left, we have our filament library panel. These entries contain information about these specific filaments and the amount of light they transmit. This is quantified by the transmission distance, or TD. The lower the transmission distance, the less light that passes through. 
We'll choose four colors for this model and drag and drop each one to one of the sliders at the bottom of the interface. The order from left to right doesn't matter. The height of the sliders relative to one another is what dictates which color will come out on top. We'll tweak the sliders until we get a result we're happy with. We can then save the project and export the STL. The layering of colors is achieved with fixed layer transitions, which can be accomplished with filament swaps or a multi-material system like the Bamboo AMS. In addition to the STL file, QForge also generates a text file, which indicates at which layers the filament should be changed. We'll import the generated model into Bamboo Studio and load up the printer profile for the X1 Carbon with a single AMS. For this process, you don't need to use Bamboo Studio or a Bamboo printer. You can also use Prusa Slicer and any other printer you may own. With the printer profile configured, we'll change the print settings profile to 0.08 fine, the first layer height to 0.16, and the infill to 100%. We can then slice and see the result. Note that slicing these high resolution models at these low layer heights is incredibly slow and may take as much as 15 minutes depending on the specs of your computer. With the model sliced, we can use the layer slider to find the transition points. Right click the plus icon and select change filament. Repeat this process for all of the transition points indicated in the documentation provided from QForge. That's it for slicer setup. If we look at the print time, we can see that it's four hours and 50 minutes. Crazy, right? Why so long? If we scroll through the layers, we can see that the outline from the image starts one layer before the image itself. Essentially, it cuts into the base, disrupting the continuity of the rastering. Not only is this inefficient, it will also degrade the quality of the output, because every start and stop will create a visible imperfection. So here's where the pro tips come in. Turn the top solid layers to zero and the bottom solid layers to 40 or as many as it takes to cover the entire height of your model. Make sure the bottom fill pattern is set to monotonic. You'll also want to deselect the one perimeter on top layer option and drop the overall perimeter count to one. If we then reslice, you can see we have a much cleaner, more continuous result. But we still have these strange anomalies where the extrusion will stop and start again. In order to eliminate these, we need to increase the slice gap closing radius. When we reslice again, we now have a perfectly continuous layer. We've also managed to reduce the print time by over an hour for this model. All right, now we are ready to print. A few hours later, and we're ready to retrieve our masterpiece. Boy, am I stoked with this. I think it turned out really, really well. One thing you may notice is that this result is close, but not identical to what we see on screen. The reason for this is because we did not calibrate our filaments that we used here. I used pre-configured QForge filaments for which the transmission distance is predefined. But not all filaments are created equal. A white from one manufacturer may be significantly more or less translucent than a white from another. The same goes for all other colors. The transmission distances pre-populated in QForge are specific to the manufacturers indicated may not be suitable for the shades you have in your filament library. You can see the effect this can have by adjusting the transmission distance for a particular color and watching as the image changes. If you want your output to more closely match what you see on screen, you'll need to calibrate the transmission distance for your filaments. You can export this STL and configure it for printing the same way as before, adding only a single transition at layer 9. After printing, compare the result with what you see on screen and adjust the transmission distance until the two look visually similar. Then, save the result as a new filament profile. The next time you print, you should have a much more accurate result. So what do you guys think? Will you try this technique on your own printers, or will you stick to printing in three dimensions? Let me know in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, and hit that subscribe button for more content. My name's Taylor, this is YGK3D, and until next time, happy 3D printing.